Hey guys, uh, Mr. B here bringing another math video. This one on solving trigonometric equations. So, um, you probably, um, you know, done a few simple trigonometric equations, something like sine of, um, you know, sine of theta is equal to one half or something like that. And you finally moved up into some more complicated ones where you have, you have, a, you, you know, kind of a lot going on. You have some something inside you know where the angle would be where theta would be that's a little bit complicated sort of like I have with this one and you have sort of a you have a um, horizontal translation going on here and a horizontal stretch so um, when you're solving something like this guy um, we really need to be aware that there are many different ways you could do it um, this is only one way and the way that my most of my students prefer to do it but what we like to do is we like to take what this guy is in whatever's inside the cos function, the sine function, the tan function, and set it equal to uh, m. I'm going to call it m. You could use whatever. I don't like to use, you know, if I had theta here, I'm not going to use theta or x. So some other letter besides those two. And I'm going to set that equal to this guy over here. So now what I have is cos of m is equal to negative 3 over 2 root 3 over 2 so now I can go ahead and solve this like one of my easier ones that I probably did in a previous grade so now what I'm gonna do is first thing I'm gonna do is gonna find my reference angle so my reference angle I'm gonna call it MR normally it will be theta R so my reference angle is cos negative 1 and when I find my reference angle, I don't put the negative in here because my reference angle should be between 0 and 90. And um, in order to get that angle, we want to have the, the um, you know, the angle that is between 0 and 90. So in order to do that, we need to make sure that we forget about that negative. And that's an often a common mistake, but you should know that if you get, if you do make that mistake, you should, you'll should you get an answer most often than not that's probably not in the first quadrant. Um, so if you look at this, we want our answers in, in radians. So you have two options basically is what I tell my students. Is that you can work th with radians throughout or you can do the entire thing in degrees. So I'm going to do the entire thing, or sorry, the entire thing in degrees then convert to radians after. So I'm going to actually do this in radians the whole way through, but if you did it in degrees it wouldn't change a whole lot. So when I did this in my, I, I literally, I just put this in my calculator just as it was. Um, some of you guys might know the unit circle, but um, most students don't like to use it. If you have access to a calculator, why even bother memorizing that thing? So you can use this guy. Put it in your calculator, and then you're done. So that came out to be 30 degrees in my calculator. And I know that 30 degrees is pi over 6. So I tell my students that they should they should know some of the easy or the ones that show up a lot in degrees so 30 is pi over 6 45 is pi over 4 and 60 is pi over 3 so they should know those off the top of their head that way you know I you generally keep my calculator in degree mode and then um, when I work with radians then um, just convert it in my head that kind of thing all right, so that's my reference angle. Now I need to find my actual values of m. So first thing I should notice here is that cos is negative. So cosine is negative, so I'm going to write that out. So cos is negative. And if you think about the cast rule, so something I'm sure many of you guys have uh, seen before. So C, A, S, T. So cos is negative in the second and third quadrant. So cos is negative in Q2 and Q3. So what this means is that we have to use our special relationships from the cash rule. So if you remember the cash rule here, theta is equal to theta r. So in our case it would be m is equal to m r. And here we have theta is equal to pi subtract theta r and here we have theta is equal to pi plus theta r 
and here we have theta is equal to 2 pi minus theta r. So if you were doing it in degrees, this would be you know 180, 180, and 360. So we're going to take the relationship for uh, pi minus th uh, theta r and pi plus. So I have m is equal to pi minus pi over 6 and I have m is equal to theta plus pi over 6. So that leaves me with, so that's going to be, I can think of this as 6 pi over 6, so that's 5 pi over 6, and again if you if you really wanted to know how to do this in your auto test and you want to be 100 percent sure that you did it correctly in your calculator you could put 1 minus 1 over 6 and you'd get 5 over 6 and then just tack a pi next to it. So this would, I'm going to think of this as 6 over 6 so 6 pi over 6 and that's 7 pi over 6. So that's my two values of m. Now recognize these are not solutions. What we have now is we have m is equal to this guy. So we want values of x. We have m right now. So we have to set these equal to 4 times x minus pi over 2. So I got 5 over 6 is equal to 4 times x minus pi over 2. And I have 7 pi over 6 is equal to 4 x minus pi over 2. So what I have to do now is I need to solve this for x, both of these. So the, what I'll do is there's a 4 in front of each of these, so I'm just going to div divide both sides by 4. So what ends up happening, let me just take it a different color pen. So I divide this side by 4, and I divide this side by 4. Side by four. So these fours obviously cancel just like that. And then what I'm left with is five pi over six divided by four is the same as five pi over twenty four. So really all I really end up doing is times in this six by four, essentially. And that's equal to x minus pi over two. And this becomes seven pi over 24 and again if you weren't really sure on this you're on a test and you want to make sure you're 100% right take it 5 pi over 6 throw it in your calculator divide it by 4 on a TI-83 TI-84 math fraction change it back to a fraction alright so now and leave the pi out just tack it in after so now what I want to do is I'm going to add pi over 2 to both sides I'm going to add pi over 2 to both sides over here. So, really, I need a common denominator here. So, my common denominator is 24, so I'd have to multiply. So, this would be the same as uh, 24 over 12. Or, sorry, um, multiply the 12 over 24. So, I would have x is equal to... Um, 5 pi oh, 24 plus 12 pi over 24. So you wouldn't need to write that step, but I'm just doing it for you if you're not sure where it came from. So all I did was multiply this guy by um, 12 over 12 just to get a common denominator. And that leaves me with x is equal to 17 pi over 24. And again, your calculator could totally do that. Um, so this one is going to be 7 pi over 24 plus 12 pi over 24 which leads me to 19 pi over 24 so those are two solutions to my um, trigonometric equation so what you should have learned in class was that um, trigonometric equations have an infinite number of solutions for the most part so the question is, is how far apart are those solutions? So that all depends on the period and how your um, equation repeats. So generally sine and cos 
have a period of 360 or 2 pi and tan has a period of 180 or pi. So your solutions would repeat um, you'd have your coterminal angles every 360 if there were if there's no horizontal stretch but however if you look at this example we have a B value here so um, so that B value should know is closely related to the horizontal stretch so um, there's two formulas that you kinda need to know so maybe you don't know that as a B parameter that doesn't matter um, my students do but anyway I'll write out the two formulas that, that may be useful to you so the period of a function of a trigonometric function of for sine and cos is equal to 2 pi divided by the value the absolute value of b so you might know the absolute value of b as 1 over the hs or 2 pi times the horizontal stretch. So the horizontal stretch in this case is 1 over 4, right? So um, your B value is 4, your horizontal stretch is 1 over B, which will make it 1 over 4. So that's important to recognize. So really I'm just going to tack, I'm going to use this guy because this is what my students use. So it's no different if you divide by 4 or multiply by 1 over 4, it's the same thing, right? So my period is pi over 2. So these solutions repeat every pi over 2. So now I need to represent all those solutions, all the possible values of x. So this is what I do. So I'm going to use sort of like a piecewise um, two-part solution. So I'm going to put my first solution, 17 pi over 24. And I'm going to put my second solution, 19 pi over 24 and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put plus plus so I'm gonna add um, pi over 2 or subtract pi over 2 from them and the way I'm gonna get all those plus and minus pi over 2's is I'm gonna use I'm gonna put a K right here and we're gonna say K belongs to um, integer so I'm gonna use Z for that symbol and I'll do the same thing. K belongs to Z. So in that, if this is K is negative one, then I'm basically I'm subtracting off or I'm adding negative pi over two, which is the same as subtracting pi over two. If it's plus one, then it's I'm adding pi over two, and it continues on through the entire, um, you know, set of numbers for integers. So you could also use plus or minus and use whole numbers, whatever you prefer. Um, so that is all the possible values of x that are solutions for this guy so if you wanted to check those you could easily take that and sub a few back in here and then just check them and see if you get negative negative um, 3 over 2 and that's it so um, these are tough questions guys there's a lot of things going on you really have to you know practice them um, I hope this video helped you out a little bit and uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in class